So welcome back for part two uh, with the UI table views um, and the UI table view controller. I uh, kind of forced you to take a break uh, just because sometimes people don't take good breaks. Um, <clears throat> but things that we've done so far is we're getting our bookmarks table view controller together. Uh, we took care of deleting bookmarks. That's working great. Um, we took care of, um, well, I mean, we took care of starting some code in here, clicking on them does stuff, deleting does works, reorder works, um, and where we're currently at is we're getting ready to add new bookmarks. <clears throat> so you should be able to uh, move things around. Uh, that's all well and good. Uh, but the add button, currently the only thing the add button does is it prints that little log message. Um, and that's where we're going to pick up from uh, today. Um, it's going to really make use of some of the work that we've done with like understanding how a parent and child relationship works. Because when you click on add, it's going to bring up a new view controller. Um, that view controller is going to be a child um, of the other one. Um, and we're going to set up a delegate and a protocol. Um, and whenever you start doing that stuff, it just, it just takes a while to get your head around it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do um, is we're going to go into the add bookmark area. Um, and we're going to stub out our plan. So our plan is this. Um, right now, in view did load, you can see that we create this right button item. Um, and if somebody clicks on it, it calls the add bookmark function. Add bookmark right now, it just prints out a little log message. Now what we want to do here is we want to lazy load um, a bookmark uh, view controller. So we're going to make a new class called bookmark view controller. Um, we are going to um, take care of the memory management for it, so that's going to be important. Um, and then it's going to be a child, and we're going to become the delegate um, to that instance. Um, and then we're going to uh, push uh, the child um, onto the nav stack. And then we're also going to um, update um, a few visual fields. Um, and this will make more sense uh, whenever we start doing it. So these are some of the things that we're going to do in the parent. Um, but we're going to go play for a while in the child object first. Um, so let's go ahead and let's make a new uh, bookmark uh, view controller. So that's what we uh, need to do next. So right click on classes um, and let's create a new file. A bookmark view controller um, is going to be targeted for the iPad. Um, it is not going to be a table view controller, uh, but we do want a zib. So actually all these were correct. And so this is a bookmark uh, view controller. Great. Um, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and start off with the visual stuff first. Um, that gives you the best idea of what this thing is. So here we made it. Um, let's go ahead and do the visual portion first. What we're going to do here is there's going to be two text fields, one for the title, one for the URL. Um, and then we're going to have two buttons that says use URL from the top web view um, or use the URL from the bottom web view. Um, and that's just going to autofill uh, this URL area. We're also going to eventually have more buttons. Uh, there's going to be buttons in the navigation bar. One is going to be for save changes, uh, which I'll put on the left. So you click on it, it'll save it and go back. Um, and on the right, it's going to be for cancel changes. Um, so you're going to cancel it on the right, um, and it's going to go back. It's just not going to save anything. Cool, so let's go ahead and make this thing visually first. Um, so go ahead and double-click on the zip file. The first thing you'll notice is that it's actually way too big, um, and that's because we haven't said it's going to be in a master yet. Um, so to do that, um, you can just go ahead and click on um, the view um, and then uh, the attributes, you can hit Command-1 to bring this up. And you can say that this is going to be in a split view controller for a master. Um, and as soon as you click on that, it'll skinny this thing right up, which is great. Another thing I want to do is I don't really like white, um, so I'm just going to pick some color. Um, I'll just use the light gray color, um, just so it looks a little better. 
Um, and I'm going to start dragging out um, a couple labels. Uh, so I'm going to put a label on here. This one will be called the bookmark uh, title. Uh, just because I'm feeling frisky, I'll make it look a little better. Um, let's just make it bigger. Um, I know, bold oblique, I feel like that looks pretty good sometimes. So we've got a bookmark title. And then we'll have a field, a UI text field for it. Um, and you know, there's always more properties you could set. You could say, you know, things like um, enter title to be displayed, or sorry, enter title. I think they would figure it out. Just so it kind of has a similar look, um, I'll do the, I held down option and dragged it down. Um, and for this one, we'll say enter URL. Um, and then we also want those two buttons. Um, so one of them, one of these buttons says uh, use uh, URL from top uh, web view. Or use URL from bottom web view. We'll go ahead and center it up. Uh, then we'll make them the same size. <clears throat> Great. So we've got a little a little look here. Now it looks like it's forced to the top pretty high, uh, but when the keyboard comes up, it'll be okay. We do want to uh, set a tag on the buttons. Um, and that's because I'm going to have them call the same IB action, but I want to know who clicked it. To be consistent with my client sides, I called it a thousand on the top and a thousand and one on the bottom. So this one, I'm going to set the tag on him to a thousand. It doesn't matter that the same tag number is used in another view. That's no big deal. Um, we just want to be able to, to tell them apart. Um, and then the bottom one will be a thousand and one. You could also set tags on uh, the text fields. Um, if they're delegate, you needed to know like you know which one was in the delegate. Um, for the for our purposes today, we don't need that. Um, but if you wanted to make this app more robust, you might do something with that. But we don't need it. We just need tags on these guys. So there's still going to be some more connections coming. Uh, but now we've got a basics of the uh, zip file together. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to make some connections um, in our bookmark view controller.h. There's a lot that we're going to do here. Um, so let's just go ahead and stub it out and then we'll start typing some of it. Um, so this is going to be a child object um, to the bookmarks table view controller. So we're going to have to uh, create a delegate. Uh, IVAR, um, which means if we're going to create a delegate IVAR, we're going to have to create um, a protocol. Um, so that's going to be important. Oh, before I get too far, I want to copy these uh, tags over. Just because I'll forget if I don't do it soon. Nobody really needs these, so I'll stick them in the implementation file. No other people need these, uh, so I stuck them in the implementation file. So, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, so we're going to create a delegate IVAR, uh, we're going to create a protocol, um, and we're also going to uh, create a property uh, for the delegate IVAR, uh, making sure uh, it implements uh, the protocol. Um, and then we're also going to have a couple other links on here. Uh, let's go ahead and make a link to both text fields. Um, so we're going to make an IVAR, uh, so the top text field, um, and then the bottom text field, um, as well as, you know, properties for those. Um, and then last, we're going to need an IB action uh, for the buttons. So those things will all be important. Let's talk about the protocol first. <clears throat> so the protocol 
if you think about what this thing's gonna do, oh shoot, I forgot to I forgot to leave space at the top here. I messed up a little bit. Um, grab yours and move everything down a little. Um, and what we need to do is we need to insert at the top. There's going to be a nav bar up here. Uh, what you can do is you can hit uh, Command One, and you can say at the top there's going to be a navigation bar. Um, and so it'll add the navigation bar. Oh, it looks like it moved everything down for me, uh, which is great. Um, so grab everything and move it back up. So I forgot my nav bar before. Um, this little trick, uh, they added this back in like, I don't know, the, the late twos. Um, but you can add things on here just kind of to say, hey, there's going to be this on here. So adjust as appropriate. Um, so there's going to be buttons on the top here for save um, and for cancel. So the goal is let's figure out what are we going to need to tell our delegates. So what... Um, what things does this need to communicate to, like, its parent? Um, it's going to need to communicate if somebody presses the save button. Um, we're going to have to tell it what was here and what was here. Um, and so we're going to have to say, hey, somebody saved a bookmark. Um, here's the title. Here's the uh, URL. So we're going to have to make something for that. Also, these are questions that we're going to have to get from our delegate. Um, so we're going to have to get the string... Uh, from the top web view and from the bottom web view. So our protocol is going to have two activities in it. Um, one is going to be to inform uh, the delegate um, of an event. And then the other is going to be to get uh, data from the delegate. Uh, more specifically, the uh, event is a save bookmark. Um, and then the data we're going to have to get from the delegate is the URL um, as a string from the top or bottom web view. So we're going to have to communicate with our um, with our parent. Um, and and making these protocols is, is really important. Um, and it, it's how this it's how this stuff gets organized. So let's catch up the slides a little bit. So this stuff is stuff that we learned uh, back when we did custom root view controllers. We're going to have a parent. It's going to implement the delegate protocol. It's going to have a pointer to the child that's going to be retained. The child is going to define the protocol. Um, and it's going to have a delegate IVAR um, that's going to be of type id. Um, and we're going to make sure that it's got to be something that implements the protocol. And it's going to be an assign. The reason it's an assign is to avoid this retain cycle issue. Um, so Apple's example here is if you have a document, a page, and a paragraph, document can retain page, page can retain paragraph, um, but you don't retain um, the other direction. You assign. So that's what we're going to do there. Anytime we do a delegate plus a protocol, uh, we're going to go through the steps that we went through with the custom root view controller. Um, and that is in the child, these are the blue activities in the child, create a protocol, a delegate IVAR, a property for the delegate, um, and call those methods. So those are going to be the child responsibilities. Parent responsibilities is to handle the memory management for the child, um, you know, create it, put it on the screen. Then the parent is going to have to implement the protocol methods, um, and the parent is going to have to somehow be set as the delegate. Um, so we're going to have to go through all seven of these steps. Um, with this system as well. So you can see how the concepts we learned there were really a lot bigger um, there for any parent-child relationship. To actually implement this, uh, let's start stealing code. Um, so let's steal a little bit at a time so we can talk about it. Um, so I'm going to steal these two pound defines and the protocol methods. So you can see that uh, we created a protocol uh, check. Um, we created a protocol called bookmark view controller delegate. Um, this protocol extends off the NS object protocol. Uh, this is a pretty standard thing. You can just always you can always say it extends on top of the NS object protocol. Uh, the one funny thing about putting it before the at interface um, is at this point the compiler doesn't know about the interface that's about to come. Um, so you have to say that there's a class. 
Um, and then there are two activities in here. One is to um, inform the delegate of an event. Um, so the save bookmark button being clicked is an event. Um, so what I did is I did this the typical stuff. Um, first thing is you return um, you know a pointer to the child object that called it. Um, did save changes to bookmark um, and we pass it the bookmark title um, and then we also pass it um, what was in that string uh, for the URL. The other delegate method that we're going to need um, is for an entirely different purpose. Uh, we're going to have to get data from our, our delegate. Um, and what we really want is we want the URL as a string um, for one of the web views. We have to ask whether we want the top web view or the bottom web view. Uh, what I chose to do is I just made a little pound to find for uh, web view index top, web view index bottom. So I'm going to pass either a one or a zero. Um, and my delegate will have to look at these pound to find so he knows which one I'm asking for. Cool, so that is our protocol. Um, in addition to our protocol, uh, we're going to have to create, and all these I can just type, uh, we're have to going to create an IVAR for our delegates, uh, which is just id delegate. Uh, when we create the property, it's important that we do a, um, a sign. Um, I went ahead and typed non-atomic as well because um, I don't care about thread safety in this app. Um, so non-atomic is a little faster. Um, a sign is the important one. Um, and so we're going to not only do uh, this, we're going to make sure that whatever gets assigned to it must implement the bookmark view controller delegate protocol. Um, and so this is exactly like what we did last time, but it's a good skill uh, to continue to learn. The other things are, you know, old-fashioned stuff, IB actions and IB outlets. Um, these I can just copy-paste. I'm not worried about these. So both the text fields, uh, we're going to make outlets for them. So bookmark title text field and bookmark URL text field. Um, and for those, I'm going to make properties. Nothing too surprising there. Um, and then I'm also going to have an IB action for the button. Cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and synthesize and release um, and do some of that stuff. Uh, so if we go into the implementation file, um, we've got our synthesize. Uh, I reminded myself about those pound defines. When I practiced, I forgot to put it in those pound defines. Um, so we synthesize both text fields and the delegate. Now, the one important thing is that your delegate was an assign, um, so you do not release the delegate. All right, so there's no release for the delegate. And as we've said so many times, if you want to be a really good memory management citizen, um, they might unload your view. Um, and if they unload your view, we want to free up as much space as possible. Um, and you can throw away these things as well. Cool, so it's time to connect some of these things. Um, so let's go ahead and connect the two IB outlets. Oh, there's one other thing we could do. Um, you could also become a UI text field um, delegate. I went ahead and put this in here because if you wanted to make this app more robust, you could do something with it. Since we covered this last time, um, I'm not actually going to do anything with this. I'm just going to like put it in as a placeholder. Um, so uh, you could choose to become a delegate to this as well. So let's go connect these things. We've got to connect our two outlets, um, our two buttons to this action, and then optionally we can connect those two uh, text fields to be delegates there. So let's go into our zip file um, and make some connections. So I'm going to drag from files owner, control drag to this one and say that's my title text field. Control drag to this one and say that's my URL text field. Uh, going the other way, I'm going to say if somebody presses this button, I want you to call the fill bookmark field with URL. And this one connects to the same. Um, and then if you wanted to prepare for the delegate, you could go ahead and connect the delegates. Um, it's usually good to do this, and at least at a bare minimum, if somebody presses enter, you should clear the keyboard off. 
Um, we're not going to do it in this app just because you should know how to do it. But if somebody presses enter, you might want that to trigger the save activity as well. Um, but we'll leave that as, a, as an activity for the viewer. Cool. So we connected um, two outlets, two actions, and two delegates. Great. So things are going good. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start um, implementing some of these things. So for example, um, we could implement the fill. Um, so if somebody clicks on that button, fill bookmark with URL, um, we could call this uh, action. Um, and just to share, there's a lot that needs to happen, right? Um, so we've still got to implement all the steps in the child. And before this thing is even visible, we've at least got to do this one step in the parent. Um, what I thought we'd do is I thought we would go ahead and finish up with the child, um, and then we'll go back and we'll do the stuff in the parent. Um, order of operations doesn't really matter. Um, the only trouble is you can't see anything visible um, until you do this step. Um, but let's go ahead and knock out. Um, let's go ahead and knock out this bottom step in the child. Then we'll go to the parent. So what I want to do is I want to do a couple things. Um, if somebody clicks on the fill uh, bookmark, um, we want to, uh, to do something with that. Uh, we also are going to add two more buttons. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and click on it here. So we want to make a save button, um, and we also want to make a cancel button. Um, so we want to do those. Um, so we're going to make those in view did load. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, make a save button um, and add it to the left. And then we're also going to make a cancel button and add it to the right. Um, and we're going to make functions that these call. So we're going to make a function that gets called when we click on save and a function that gets called when we click on cancel. Uh, let's go cheat though um, and let's grab this from um, the solution that's in the slides. So we add a save button on the right um, and a cancel button um, on the, uh, sorry, save is on the left um, and then cancels on the right to make this a little easier for you to see. I love how Xcode uh, puts all the column or all the colons in order. I think that's slick. The little things that Apple does right. So um, we're going to create a bar button item. Um, we're going to have it. We're just going to say save bookmark um, or cancel bookmark. Um, if somebody clicks on save, um, it'll call a function called um, save changes. And if somebody clicks on the cancel button, it will call a function called uh, cancel changes. So we've got to implement um, all these different tasks. If somebody clicks cancel, the only thing we need to do is we need to pop um, ourself um, off the nav stack. If somebody hits save, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, inform uh, our delegate um, of the save event, uh, passing uh, the title and URL, um, and then we'll pop ourselves off the stack. Um, if somebody hits fill, what we need to do is we need to get the data uh, from the delegate. Uh, with the URL string from appropriate uh, web view. So implementing these three actions um, and calling our delegate method um, is the next thing we're going to do. So let's go ahead and uh, cheat um, and steal from the solution uh, what goes into these guys. So for save changes, 
Uh, what we want to do is we want to, um, at the bottom, we're going to pop ourselves off. So we pop ourselves off the stack. Um, it looks like the way I chose to do it is I pop myself and then I tell my delegates. Um, shouldn't really matter about the order. Um, and what I'm going to tell my delegate is I'm going to tell them the text field uh, that was in the uh, that was in <coughs> it, that was in the text field, um, and I'm also going to tell them what was in the URL field. I do a little bit of checking. Um, th this is optional. Um, if they didn't type in something that started with HTTP, um, I'm going to go ahead and add it. Um, so I just go ahead and add it right here. I could have added it on the other side, or I could have not added it. Um, there are all kinds of options. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose to add it now. Um, so I tell my delegate what was in those two fields, uh, one of them with a little bit of error checking. Uh, then I pop off the stack. If somebody hits cancel, there's very little that needs to be done. Um, you just need to pop yourself off the stack. If you're inside a navigation controller, you can say self.navigationcontroller. And hey, self.navigationcontroller, uh, do a pop. Um, and the thing that will get popped will be us. Um, so there's those two things, uh, calling our delegate, um, popping ourselves off. The other thing we need to do with our delegates is we need to get, um, we need those buttons to do something. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, delegate, um, tell me what the web view is seeing. So if the senders tag is top, um, then we pass in the web view top index. If it's not top, it must be bottom, um, and we pass in the web view bottom index. So all we're doing here is we're just setting the text that's in that text field to whatever the delegate told us. So the delegate is going to tell us um, what the uh, what the URL is, um, and we're just going to fill in that text field. So you can see there's two very different uses of the delegate. One is to get information from them, um, and then this one is to inform them of an event. Whew. So at this point, the child is good to go. So the child does all the different things a child needs to do. And this is, uh, this is the, the bulk, right? Now let's go deal with the parent. So the parent, um, before we just kind of put some stubs in here for what the parent was going to do. Um, so the parent is going to need to lazy load a bookmark view controller. So let's go into the .h file and let's make some of this stuff happen. So we're going to have to have a bookmark uh, view controller object. Um, I'll just call it bookmark view controller. Um, we're going to have to implement the uh, bookmark view controller delegate method or protocol. In order for us to know about this protocol, we're going to have to import that class uh, bookmark view controller dot h. So we import it. We say that we implement it. We make the claim, um, and then we um, have a, an ivar to it. In addition to having an ivar, we're going to make a property. Uh, just to help us with the memory management. Since this is the child, we can just retain it. There's nothing nothing wrong with just retaining. And then whenever I make a property, I like to just go ahead and do the synthesize right away so I don't forget. Um, and then deal with the memory management. So we're going to release it. Um, and I don't think that my view would ever unload, but I'll go ahead and put it in there as well. Cool. Um, so you'll note that there's no IB outlet. We're not connecting it to anything in a zib. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to lazy load it. Um, and to lazy load it, what we're going to do is we're going to say if self dot bookmark view controller is nil, then we're going to make it. Um, so to make it, we're going to say new bookmark uh, view controller. You are equal to uh, bookmark view controller alloc. Whenever you make a um, new view controller, you typically use init with nib name. Unless the nib has the same name as the class, um, you can just say init, which will do that. 
Uh, once we have that, we can set it to our IVAR and release it. This is the book style of memory management that I kind of like. And then the other important thing is uh, we need to set the delegate to be self. Um, so this establishes the parent-child relationship. Cool. Um, so become the delegate. Uh, check. Um, and then uh, we're also um, going to want to make it visible. So we'll say self.navigationcontroller, uh, push view controller self.bookmarkViewController animated yes. Um, and then if you push it once, you do stuff with it, and then you push it a second time, uh, those text fields will have stuff in them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and clear them off. Um, so what was it called? It was called um, bookmark URL text field text. Clear it out. Um, and then also uh, bookmark um, title text fields text, uh, clear it out. Um, you can see that I chose to push it and then clear it. The only reason I do that is just because um, whenever you set things on a view, you want to make sure that the view has actually been loaded. Um, and if I set them before I push it, and the view isn't loaded, then I'm not really setting anything. Um, here it doesn't matter, but it's a good habit to be in, into. Uh, if you're setting something on a view, um, make sure that view has been loaded first, because if it hasn't been loaded, then you don't really set anything. Um, so we're getting pretty close to being able to run it. The only thing that I want to do is if you try to build it now, it'll yell at you and say you haven't implemented the delegate yet. Um, let's go implement that delegate. I don't like when the compiler yells at me. I don't like when anybody yells at me. I certainly don't like the compiler. Actually, the compiler is probably better than most. All right, enough digressing. Uh, we've got to implement these two. Uh, we'll do um, we'll do the standard start right. So we'll um, we'll go ahead and print up a log message. Uh, with the function name in it. And then this bottom one, we also have to return something. We'll just return nil for now. Um, at least the compiler won't complain if you return nil. Alright, we've done we've done a lot um, of this stuff. Uh, we've actually now implemented, um, let's go ahead and catch up the slides here. Uh, import, said we're going to be a delegate, got a link to it. Um, lazy load this thing set ourselves as the delegate, push it on. Um, now we're ready to see, um, implement the delegate with just quick little stubs. Uh, now we're ready to see if this thing actually, um, <laughs> if, if the code we've been typing for the last half hour actually does anything. Maybe a little too long between the test. So if I hit the plus arrow, um, it pushes on uh, the view controller, that's great. Um, if I hit cancel, it should pop it off. So you can see it's kind of nice that they made the master a navigation controller because you can push things on and pop them off, which is pretty cool. You can see that it stays with the green tent because it's actually the same navigation bar um, that you used over here. It's the same bar. It just has different navigation items on it, which is kind of cool. Um, if we want to test our buttons, um, if we click on uh, Use Top, um, it should actually call um, our delegate, um, and it looks like they both uh, call the delegate. It doesn't do anything yet, but it calls it. If you hit save, um, oh, if you hit save, it crashes horribly. Um, oops. Um, apparently, um, it did some appending with nil in it. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Um, so it crashed horribly uh, because we weren't careful um, and we didn't have any text in here. Um, this is obviously something you don't you don't want you don't like when your programs crash, right? Um, so if you were to release this, um, you would have to do some checking here that you that you don't try to append on nil um, to fix it. For now, we'll just we'll just make sure to always have text in here um, before releasing something. You've got to check for all these little things. So you can say it, it says did save changes to bookmark. 
um, and it looks like it's calling our delegate method. Whew. So, where are we at? We've done all of the delegate and protocol steps. The only thing we didn't do is we didn't implement them with real, um, we didn't implement anything real, right? So let's go, let's go really implement them um, instead of just do the stubs. So if somebody says save changes to bookmark, uh, what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to um, add the bookmark title uh, to the bookmark um, display names array and we're also going to have to add the URL plus key uh, to the dictionary and then we're going to want to reload the table so these are the activities we'll need to take if somebody says save changes um, to get the URL what we're going to need to do is we're going to um, get the NS um, URL request uh, from the appropriate web view um, and then we're going to have to get the string uh, from the NS URL request um, so it's called like the absolute path or something like that maybe it's just called absolute string I forget um, and then we're going to return it, right? Return that string. So this is the plan. Um, I like to kind of stub out the plan to make sure you know uh, what's going on. Um, but then we're going to cheat. Um, and we're going to steal the actual implementation uh, from the slides. If only when you made your real apps, you could just go steal things from the slides. <laughs> um, so we're going to add it to... Um, so we're going to add the thing that got passed into the display names, um, and then we're going to add the key to the dictionary. Um, you can see that I took the URL that I got passed, um, I made a URL out of the string, um, and then I made a request from the NS URL, stuck that in my dictionary, um, and then I just reload the table. Um, there are more elegant ways to do it, but reloading the table is easy. If um, the child asks me for information, I should respond. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I don't really need my log messages anymore. Um, get the URL uh, from the appropriate place. Um, and then I kind of do the last couple steps together. Um, so I get the URL. If they passed in uh, the web index top, um, I have access to this pound define because it's in the header file, so I, I have access to it. Um, if they pass me in top, um, I grab the selected web view as the web view top. If it wasn't top, then it must have been bottom. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is they actually, um, this got me a web view. From the web view, I'm going to get the request. That's what it can tell me. From the request, I'm going to get the uh, NS URL by calling URL. Um, and then from the NS URL, I'm going to get the absolute string. Um, and I'm going to return that string. So I kind of did a couple of steps um, all in one line here. Uh, but that should be good enough. And if you run this thing now... Um, we should be able to add new bookmarks, uh, which is kind of neat. So let's do this. Let's go on the top. Let's go to Rolls Holman. Uh, let's go to um, our robotics website. Oh, I forgot. It's not like that. It's uh, robotics.rollsholman.edu. Uh, also, one of the main people in the uh, robotics certificate. Uh, looks like Dr. Baltel has been making some changes to it. That's good. This is me, Dave Fisher. Um, and so now if we click on Add Bookmarks, um, we say Robotics uh, at Rolls-Holman. Um, and I say grab the URL from the top. Um, and then I say Save Bookmark. Uh, now I've got this link. 
If I want to stick it in the bottom, um, I can click on it um, and it'll go there. Um, and we've got a reasonably functional um, little web browser. If I go to the ME department, um, you can click on a bunch of stuff here. You can see who our different faculty are. Um, ooh, where am I at? It's a terrible picture. I don't know why I'm trying to find myself. Ah, there I am, Dave Fisher, uh, with just a terrible, terrible picture. Um, so this is my little website. Oh, let's add myself a bookmark. So uh, my Rolls Holman uh, homepage, um, and I'm going to get the link from the top. Um, oh, that's weird. Percent seven e. Um, uh, I think it should have been a tilde. I don't think that's going to work. Um, plenty of things to fix. Oh yeah, apparently percent seven e does work just fine as a tilde. Um, that's interesting because um, I thought it should have been a tilde. Um, so you can see there's some information about me on my website, not necessarily a lot. Um, yeah, um, I think this stuff is really cool. Um, so I could play around with making little bookmarks uh, all the time. Um, so Mobac Design, um, I'll add myself a little bookmark. So this is um, my company. Um, so officially I have a company called Mobac Design, um, which is kind of fun. It's more of a hobby than a company, to be perfectly honest. Um, you can see that I've got an easy cam app, uh, which is one of the things that I've got up. Um, so all kinds of uh, bookmarks you could have on the web. Um, one thing that this app lacks is it lacks persistent uh, persistence. Fortunately, I'm running 4.2, um, so so long as I uh, don't actually close the app, it'll it'll keep track of things. Um, but it's a fairly usable uh, little example app, which is something we haven't had before. We never actually make um, usable examples. Um, so that's kind of neat. Still some things that should happen. There should probably be a reload button. There should probably be a back button, uh, things like that. Um, but it's fairly usable. The one additional feature that we are going to add, just because it's a good learning experience, is um, let's say I wanted to change the name instead of, you know, my instead of my Rolls Holman homepage, I just wanted to capitalize the H. Um, right now, if I wanted to do something simple like capitalize the H, there's no good way to edit. Um, there's no good way to edit these bookmarks. So the last thing we're going to add, I know it's been a marathon, is editing bookmarks. So let's edit some bookmarks. The way we're going to edit bookmarks is we're going to put up a little accessory um, um, icon. We're going to use the detailed disclosure um, accessory type. Uh, this is going to be like straight out of what we did in the book or what the book did. So to, to add that little icon, um, that's something that got set up whenever we said um, um, sell for row at index path. So at sell for row for index pass, this is when we put up uh, what the name was. Uh, let's also do one more thing. Uh, let's say the accessory type um, is equal to um, the detailed disclosure. Uh, I forget uh, all the special words, so I'm going to hold down option and click on this. Um, and you should be able to see... Uh, what the options are for the table view uh, accessory types as soon as it loads up. We want to set the accessory type. Uh, there are a bunch of options for accessory types. You can use the um, indicator, which is just an arrow. Um, the detailed disclosure button, which is that blue button with an arrow. That's the one we want here. Um, or you can put a check mark on there, which is something they did in the book. So the one we want is detailed disclosure button. So the accessory type is a detailed disclosure button. Um, and if you run it now, uh, they should all have a little blue arrow next to them. Clicking on the little blue arrow doesn't do anything, uh, but they've all got a little blue arrow next to them, uh, which is great. Um, the way you make um, clicking on that button call a function um, is actually built into the delegate already. Uh, and we dragged it over earlier. Um, it was called the uh, um, accessory button tapped uh, for row with index path. Um, so this is what gets called when you click on that button. 
just to prove it, we'll do the thing we always do. Uh, we'll just add a little print out the function that you're in. Um, and when you click on these buttons, um, you can see that they all call that function. So what we would like to do in this area is we would like to um, push uh, onto the nav stack a um, bookmark uh, view controller. Um, so what we can do is we can uh, lazy load it um, if it doesn't exist, um, create it. Uh, push it on to the navigation controller um, and then um, uh, fill the fields uh, with the data from this bookmark. So we want to fill the fields uh, with the data from this bookmark. Um, <clears throat> for the lazy loading we're actually doing the exact same thing we did before when somebody pressed the add button. Um, there are some clever ways to do this to make it unified. Um, so for example, you can override the, um, the properties getter, uh, which is something kind of clever you can do, and then just in there, if it's nil, um, make it, right? Um, but just to keep things simple, um, too late, I know, uh, to keep things simple, we're just going to copy-paste that same code. Um, so we're cre we've created new bookmarks, uh, we've got a detail disclosure button, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lazy load it exactly like I did before. So copy paste that same code. Because there's a chance that they might edit one of our existing ones before they ever click on add. Um, so we should check um, to make sure to lazy load it. Um, oops, looks like I changed the IVAR to just bookmark view controller. I'll have to change the slides after this. Cool. Um, so that should be... Ah! How about instead of copying and pasting from the slides, I copy and paste from up here. And I'll change the slides before you get a chance to go do this. Um, so lazy load with uh, all the new names and stuff. Um, after that, what we want to do is we want to uh, push it um, onto the navigation controller. Um, and then I'm going to change the uh, name here as well. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually grabbing uh, the title first. Um, I didn't really need to do that. Um, but the important thing is I'm pushing it onto the navigation controller first. Um, that way if I set some of the fields that are in there, I'll know for sure that the, uh, the view has been loaded. And then what I'm going to do in loading those fields um, is I'm going to load in um, to the bookmark title field um, the, the title, so whatever was at this row, I'm going to load that into the title um, and then into the URL text field um, I'm going to grab from the dictionary um, the request for this title from the request I'm going to get the URL uh, from the URL I'm going to get the absolute string so when I do this, um, it should, um, there's still more to come, but we can run it and see what's working. Uh, if I click on this, it should push on um, the make a new bookmark. It autofills uh, the fields. The one thing that I don't like is if you click on this and hit save, um, it'll actually create a second one, right, instead of editing the existing one. So if I hit save again, it'll add a third. Um, so you can see that it's not, uh, not done yet. So let's, uh, let's fix that up, because I don't like uh, creating a whole bunch of identical bookmarks. So really what we can do to clean that up is um, when we got told to save changes, um, what we did is we just, every time, we just added it. Uh, we didn't look at anything, because that worked fine before. Uh, but now we're going to do some error checking. Um, so let's only add... Um, a new display name um, if it's um, if it's new. 
like only add a new display name if it's new. Um, and then also what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to manage um, the dictionary um, of bookmarks. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove um, the bookmark um, if it exists. Um, and then we're going to, after that, we're going to add it back. Um, add back, or add the new uh, bookmark. Um, it's not extremely elegant the way I'm doing it here, um, but it was what came to mind first and it worked. Um, let's just go ahead and copy paste it. So what I'm doing here um, is I am, so I'm just going to comment out the old way because the old way didn't cut it anymore. So if the bookmark title um, is not in the array yet, um, then add it. Um, it'll just get added to the bottom. Um, so that one's done. And then the other thing I'm going to do is um, I don't want to have multiple bookmarks that all point to the same thing. Um, so I'm going to say, does the dictionary already contain this request? If the dictionary already contains the, this request, then let's remove it. Um, the way we're going to remove it is um, uh, we're going to grab the old title, uh, then we're going to remove the object for that title, um, and then um, <clears throat> also just to do some additional cleanup, um, if if the title changed, we want to completely remove that old title from the display area. Um, so we're going to remove that as well. Um, this code's a little ugly. There must be a cleaner way to do it, uh, but this will get the job done. Um, and then no matter what, uh, we're going to add the new thing to the dictionary. It might be updating an old item, um, or it might be creating a new one, um, but this will help keep our dictionary clean. Um, and then we reload the data. So this is the last piece that we're adding. Um, so now if I um, wanted to edit something, so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's go to the let's go to my web page. That's what I was doing before Fisher DS. Um, so let's say I added this bookmark, uh, my home page. I say save that bookmark, um, and then I realize later, hey, I want a capital H on here. Um, I should just be able to now change it to a capital H, say save, um, and it should clean it up um, without adding extra items. Uh, likewise, you could change the URL. Um, let's say I didn't want my home page to point there. Um, I instead wanted my home page to point to uh, mobackdesign.com. Um, now my home page should go to mobackdesign.com. Um, cool. So, <clears throat> not sure if I like the looks of the blue by all of them, uh, but it is an easy way to uh, edit things. You can see some things we got for free. Um, whenever we pop off um, that view controller, the keyboard goes away, uh, which was nice. Um, so I kind of like how it did that. Um, whenever we click on add, they're blank. Um, and whenever we click on edit, they get auto-populated. Um, and if we change the titles, um, it should keep things nice and clean and organized. The only thing it doesn't do good is when you change it, it does move it to the bottom. Um, but that's all right. We have the ability to reorder things as well. Cool. So hopefully you got um, a tremendous crash course um, in a lot of different things. Um, you've made a reasonably functional app. Um, so this is what this thing should look like. The things we learned about in this, we learned about the UI split view controller uh, becoming the split view controller delegate um, so that um, when we rotate um, the table, the bookmarks pop up in here um, and you know you can edit them from here, which is kind of neat. Probably should have set the size for the pop over here, but it's fine. Um, so we learned about how do you uh, make that pop over show up. Um, we learned a lot about uh, adding the bar button item. We learned a ton about, in the last two video lectures, UI table views and the UI table view controller. Um, how do you deal with the UI table view delegate, the UI table view data source, um, deleting rows, moving rows, um, adding rows, 
Um, this one was a, a big one, right? Um, editing rows, that's what we did last. We also learned about web views, um, a lot about using text field delegates, and the biggest thing is you just got some more practice making like real apps, right? So if you wanted to make a real app, um, what are some of the things that go into it? Um, and making a real app, this one needs a lot of cleaning as well, right? So there are a lot of little things uh, that could use cleaned up and a lot of additional features you could make. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video lecture. Hopefully you got a lot out of the example. Uh, this is the last real example um, in the course. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show people about posting things to the store and a little bit about iAds. Um, so hopefully we'll do that uh, next time. Um, and then we'll also have a video with all the student projects that are going to come out. Cool. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you, uh, see you next time.